Hello, I'm Linda Warren. I brought my harp to First Unitarian Society today to an empty room so we could try a live stream and then archived harp recital during our usual Friday noon musicale slot. Um, I'm going to start with a piece called A Pavan by Antoine Francisque from the 1700s and arranged for solo harp by Marcel Grangeny, uh, one of the great 20th century harpists. I'm kind of moving forward in history as this program goes along. Uh, this is a sonata in A major by Domenico Scarlatti. He lived from 1685 to 1757. We generally don't have a lot of solo harp music from uh, the early ages, um, and so we have stolen a lot of keyboard music, and it's been transcribed for the harp. This transcribed for solo harp by Cliff Wooldridge, a long time employee at the Lyon and Haley Harp Factory, which is the company that made my harp.
Next, we move a little further forward in time to a favorite piece of mine. Uh, if you've heard me play other recitals, you may have heard this piece multiple times. Oh well, you're hearing it again. Uh, the composer is Francois Joseph Naderin, uh, who wrote a whole slew of music for harp because he was a very famous harpist, lived from 1781 to 1835, uh, this is from one of his sets of sonatas. This is sonata number six. There's a short introduction to an allegro opening movement. And then the second movement is especially charming, I think. And it is labeled Allegretto Elegant.
Next is a piece by Welsh harpist John Thomas. John Thomas lived from 1826 until 1913 and very active as a performer and also as a composer. This piece titled The Minstrel's Adieu to His Native Land. And this is the poem that goes with it. When the light of my song is over, then take my heart to your ancient hall. Hang it up at that friendly door where weary travelers love to call. Then if some bard who roams forsaken revives its soft notes in passing along, oh, let one thought of its master waken your warmest smile for the child of song. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Next is a piece uh, that I first learned when I was about 15 years old, and I'm going to tell you that's so uh, quite a while ago, with my very first harp teacher. Her name was Sally Maxwell, and to me she was just, you know, my teacher, and no big deal, and I went and I took my lessons. Um, it turns out, as I learned later on when I was in college and beyond, that she was quite famous and important as a harpist uh, uh, across the country and later was president of the American Harp Society, at which time she immediately made me national secretary, which, okay, well, that's another story. Um, but this piece, um, I remember especially learning it because she brought in a woman from New York named Mildred Dilling to do a master class, and I played this piece. And Mildred shook her head after I was done, and she said, No, 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 Linda, you just play the notes. You have to sing. And I thought, what? Um, okay. And I played the harp very differently after uh, her visit. Uh, so this is a, a family favorite of ours. Uh, it was played at our father's memorial service. And uh, because my mother recently died, I'd like to play it in her memory today. Marguerite at her spinning wheel, and you'll hear this spinning wheel, and you will hear me singing.
then now a couple of pieces from France by two contemporary composers. First, from Claude Debussy, the premier arabesque. He wrote two arabesques for piano, and uh, we immediately stole them to play on harp, and I think they're much better on harp. Um, and really, not a notice change. They, they play so beautifully on the harp. Uh, Debussy lived from 1862 to 1918, and uh, really uh, one of the first composers who wrote what later became called impressionistic music. And then The Angelus by Henriette Regnier. She lived from 1875 to 1956 and was in fact the teacher of my harp teacher, Sally Maxwell. Regnier was one of the real pioneers in women's music. She was one of the first women to tour in Europe as a concert soloist, which was quite shocking in the early 1900s, and played beautifully, wrote many, many compositions for harp, some of which are almost impossible that people say, oh yeah, well, she could play it, that doesn't mean we can. Um, but this one is a, is a student piece that I learned many years ago, and uh, uses a lot of enharmonic spelling on the harp, and glissandos, and and just a real favorite. So first the arabesque and then the angelus.
pieces to close our program today. Um, first, Pasakalyam in Memoriam Tsunami. David Watkins is a harpist from the UK, born in 1925, still living, and wrote this in 2005 after the massive tsunami that um, hit in the south of the, of the world and took 225,000 lives in one day. And those who lived lost every single thing they had. And I often play this piece because it's, it's so moving and, and it's such a, a spiritually constructed piece of music. Um, but when I play it in church, I leave out the tsunami. It just doesn't quite seem appropriate. But today, we will have a tsunami in the Pasakalia. Pasakalia is an ancient form by which the bass line is repeated over and over. Uh, and in this is a true Pasakalia, but you won't really hear it um, unless you put on your music theory hats um, because it's, it's really quite hidden, but a gorgeous piece. And then to close us out today, uh, a little bit of jazz to, to lighten us all and give a little spark to the day. Pearl Chertok uh, is an American who lived in New York City, um, also a former president of the American Harp Society and a uh, longtime teacher and composer. Uh, really, the best pieces for harp are written by people who play harp. David Watkins is a harpist, Renier, and now Pearl Chertok, also a harpist. She wrote a whole suite called the Around the Clock Suite. Um, I'm not going to be playing one of my favorite movements, which is called Harpicide at Midnight. But today we have uh, the very lighthearted 10 past 2. And before we say goodbye, uh, I just want to thank um, Drew Collins. He's the music director here at First Unitarian Society. And he is the one who had this idea that even though we couldn't hold our normal Friday new musicales, Maybe we could still have some music on Fridays at, in this time and in this place and during these times. And so he is hidden away at the soundboard making the live stream happen. So thank you, Drew, for having this idea in the first place. Uh, thank you to me for agreeing to suddenly put four concerts together. Um, and thank you to First Unitarian Society for, for uh, keeping us both gainfully employed and also providing us with this beautiful space and the equipment. Um, but mostly thanks to Drew because uh, he is making this happen single-handedly. So two pieces to close us out. Thank you very much for joining us.
Thank you again, everyone, and thank you, Drew. And we will do this again the next three Fridays, same time, same place. Thank you.